Good afternoon and welcome to Veterans Park here at Coldwater, Ohio, where it is Division IV District Championship Day. A pair of teams from the Midwest Athletic Conference, the Marion Local Flyers and the Fort Recovery Indians. My name is Mark Shine. My pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. Alongside Chad Spencer to help us out with the color commentary. Chad, Marion Local 7, Minster 1, Fort Recovery 12, Parkway 8. That was on Wednesday. It's Friday, and now you're looking at pitchers, uh, maybe not top-line pitchers on the course of the year, but got to get through a game today. Absolutely. You start to find out about the depths of these teams when you get to the district finals. So it'll be interesting to see how these young men perform, perform in this big a game. Mary Local will be uh, uh, the home team today. Let's go through Fort Recovery's batting order. Troy Holman will play center field and lead off. Reese Wendell will be the left fielder at that second. Caden Holman is the designated hitter, hits third. He hits for the second baseman, Sage Wendell. Alex Garkey is the third baseman, hits fourth. Caden Greasy will be on the mound today. He hits fifth. And Gavin Faller at first base. Reese Evers in right field. Riggs Toby behind the plate. And Alex Dews will be the shortstop today. And they will be facing left-hander Bryant Meyer. Two and three on the season. 46 and two-thirds innings, a 1.65 ERA. In those 46 and two-thirds innings, he's given up 35 hits, 22 walks, and he has struck out 51 batters in 46 and two-thirds innings. We've got quite the contrast tonight of experience on the mound between the pitchers from these two teams, Mark. Ball smoked up the middle, Troy Holman who was hitting 255. He took that first pitch and drilled it over the second base. That, that didn't take long. <laughs> that did not. First pitch <laughs> one on. Reese Wendell will step in. Holman has nine stolen bases. Wendell hits 339 on the season. Good lead. Swings through a breaking ball. Caden Holman, Alex Garkey, and... If they get there, Kate Greasy to follow. Our home plate umpire today is Ryan Thompson. Randy Schellenbarger's at third. Joshua McNally at first, and he swings through that pitch as well. 81 degrees at uh, game time. We drove through some rain to get here. It's mm -hmm. been dry in cold water. Beautiful the baseball day. Back to first base. Uh, we've noticed this the other night when we were here, uh, Coach Spencer, and that is the flag is out kind of sheltered by some trees. You don't always get a great feel for the breeze here. Yeah, it's a bit that ball deceptive. smoked foul. The flag is the wrong thing to look at here if you want to see if the wind's yeah, blowing. That's correct. It, it does seem to be a breeze that will go from the third base uh, side into right field. Right field's also the sun field here at Coldwater. And it's an 0-2 count on Reese Wendell. Right field's also a popular lawn chair destination, as you can see. Here's Meyer. Back to the plate, and that one is spoiled foul. Did a good job spoiling off that curveball, didn't he? It is 315 down the right field line. It goes to 348 in right center, 380 in center field. O2's the count. That one's fouled back as well. This has become a five pitch at bat yes, already. Well, Reese Wendell, first team, Mac. Fort Recovery's best average hitter. It goes to 348 in left center, 335 down the left field line, and there's a terrace. There's going Holman, and he's, he's going to make there. that one easily, a stolen base. His 10th of the season puts him in scoring position. Picked a good pitch to run on. Curveball that missed up. We saw a player the other night here, here on Wednesday struggle with that terrace, made a catch going uphill, but it was a difficult thing to do. It is, and there's very few ballparks uh, that give high school kids a chance to navigate. It is a rare like thing, that. yep. Just the fact that it's all grass all the way to the fence makes it different. One and two. That pitches into dirt. It's two and two. Regardless of what happens here, Mark, that's a quality bat already for Reese. This, is, this will be pitch number eight coming up. Ball pops Spoiled up on the infield. One. Is it going to be anybody get to I it? Think it's and out of play. Nope. Another foul ball. 
Defensively, very local looks like this. Of course, Myers on the mound. Ethan Heitkamp is the catcher. Isaac Moeller is at third. Parker Hess, the winning pitcher on Wednesday night, is at short. Ian Rindler goes to second. Colton Arns is the first baseman. And left, center, and right, Camden Eifert, Griffin Bruns, and Hayden Peppelman. And he's worked it to a full count. You know, even if Reese would just hit a ground ball to the right side, it's a super productive at bat. He's cut a swing back a little, the last two swings. Reese Wendell, the left fielder, and that ball is popped up. That's playable. To the third baseman. Moeller drifts over and makes the catch, and we have one out, but as you said, there's a quality at bat with, uh, what do we got here, seven, eight? Again, nine, ten, pit nine yeah, pitch ten pitches. Ten pitches, yeah. That brings up Caden Holman, the 196 hitter, the designated hitter. Does have 12 RBIs on the season. Caden's numbers are a little misleading. <laughs> Having the most RBIs on a team, but not quite at 200 is not a normal combination for a three hitter. Designated hitter today. That ball's fouled away. He hits for Sage Wendell, who is the second baseman. 0-2 is the count here in our opening inning. Meyer had a little extra on that pitch. Alex Garkey's on deck. That There's ball is hit in the run. gap. And that's going to get down. Cut off by the center fielder, Griffin Bruns. But Troy Holman scores from second base. And it's 1-0 Indians early on. Drove a pitch into the right center field gap. There's the RBI guy. His 13th of the season. There's Alex Garkey, a 219 hitter, but he's got 10 RBI on the season. Holman's stolen two bases on the season over at first base. Meyer Meyer's only the shown the move twice now, but neither one looked like an A move. Garkey was 0 for 3, walked and scored a run in the win over Parkway on Wednesday night. Well, every batter's got a first pitch strike. Yes, they have. That one stays high. Homan one not really showing that he wants to run here down at first base. Caden Greasy's on deck. That ball's hit up in the air. And looks like the center fielder, Bruns, is going to drift in and make a play on that one. So two outs in the inning. Fly ball to center field. Greasy steps in. He's a 172 hitter on the season. He was one for two. Walked a couple times. Scored two runs. Had an RBI on Wednesday evening in the 12-8 win over the Barkway Panthers. Another first pitch strike, but to a perfectly played yeah. Ian Rindler okay. to get a force out at second base. But the Indians get on the board first. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Fort Recovery 1, Marion Local nothing. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Coldwater. Our presenting sponsor today is Burke Petroleum. They're now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Mary Local will bat it in this order today. Isaac Miller will lead off. Yeah. Ian Rindler, the second baseman, hits second. Hayden Pempelman will be in right, hit third. Ethan Heitkamp, the catcher, is fourth. The pitcher, Bryant Meyer, will hit fifth. Parker Hess, the shortstop today, hits sixth. Isaac Mullenkamp, the DH, will follow in the seventh spot. He hits for Colt Narns. Camden Eifert and Griffin Bruns will finish it out. And they will be facing Caden Greasy today. Not much to show and as far as stats this year. Exactly. He's 1-0 on the season. He's pitched in two games, just seven innings pitched. He's got an ERA of 2.00 in those seven innings. Six hits, six walks, but he struck out 12 batters in seven innings. He's also hit a batter this season. It'll be interesting to see how Caden does here in this moment. Not a lot of mound time this year. Of course, we're not privy to know if it's because of an injury or, yeah. you know, some well, other Well, they had to use uh, three, I guess, or right. two on uh, Wednesday night. Alex Dews pitched 
into the seventh, but he got to the pitch count. Mm -hmm. And then they had to you know, bring in a guy for him, and that might have messed up their rotation a little bit. Deuce gave up seven runs. Only three of them were earned. That's your game where you had a marathon inning, correct? Yeah, the sixth inning. It was 4-2 <laughs> Parkway going to the bottom of the sixth, and they put 10 runs on the board in the sixth wow. inning, did the four recovery innings. It took 40 minutes to play. That 40-minute 40, 40 innings are fun as long as you're having a bat. Leadoff hitter Isaac Miller will hit the first pitch, kind of an excuse-me foul ball down the right field line. Isaac hits just 200, but... He walked four times when he was uh, at the plate on uh, when, Monday, Wednesday evening. Breaking ball will catch the inside corner, strike two. Isaac leading a parade of underclassmen here for the Flyers today. If you look at interesting things, and we'll get to this more as the game progresses, here's 0-2 count. That ball's fouled straight back. All seven runs came from the bottom four men in the order for the Flyers on Wednesday evening. They got a lot of production from the bottom of the order. Here's Greasy, 0-2. That'll be high, one and two. I'll tell you what, uh, just watching Caden throw these first four or five pitches, he looks pretty comfortable out there. Throwing the curveball early in the count. Snaps that one off. It's outside defensively for the Fort Recovery Indians. Rick Toby is behind the plate. Alex Garkey is at third. Alex Dews will be at short. Sage Wendell's at second. Gavin Fowler is at first. One, two and two. And it'll go to three and two. Left, center, and right. Reese Wendell, Troy Holman, and Reese Evers. And it's 3-2. You can see Moeller makes you throw a lot of pitches. And got him with a called strike three. Looks like it hit the outside part of the plate, but definitely in the zone. Ian Rindler will step in, the second baseman today. It's 306 on the season, also leads the team with 19 stolen bases. He also leads the team in run scored, so obviously getting on and getting over is critical for the Flyers. Very local average is just over four runs a game. You know, I've got both teams at just about 4.3, 4.4 runs a game. Breaking ball, he waited on it and then hit it foul. Of course, they played in the regular season, being MAC foes, and mm -hmm. very local run on a walk-off ball. <laughs> Breaking ball, caught nice the outside pitch. corner. Makes it one and two from Caden Greasy. Greasy's got an interesting arm angle, just a bit of a de deceptive delivery. Same pitch, stayed outside. Does a good job of hiding two -two. the ball behind him at the, until the last moment when he's ready to come to the plate. 2-2. Two -two. Ball's hit foul. Both pitchers throw a lot of pitches in the opening mm -hmm. inning. Back to the plate comes Rindler. Hayden Peppelman is on deck. Here's Greasy. That ball's hit and gonna flare it right over the shortstop. Base hit, Ian Rindler. He got a fastball clear on his knuckles and was able to get his hips turned. Looked like he hit the ball on the short part of the bat. And here is the left-handed hitting Hayden Peppelman to step in. Again, Rindler has 19 stolen bases. Peppelman's 333 with 13 RBIs and a home run this year, diving back. Greasy says, I know you like to run. Well, that first baseman holding him on gives you a little bit of hold to shoot yes, the ball sir. through the infield there. Good lead. Snaps the breaking ball off. Strike one. Greasy pitching him backwards here, starting out with the curveball. Rindler at first with a lead. 
That'll stay outside, one and one. If you're marrying local, this is ideal. You got your base stealer on and one of your best hitters at the plate. Ethan Heitkamp, a 328 hitters on deck. Time. And where we're we got? verifying the count here, I believe. Yep. Is it 2 1? Two and one's the count. Peppelman. Just a little bit bigger lead here. Waits on the curveball, hits it to second baseman. Could well be. And did they get him? Yep. They did. They turned two. Did the Fort Recovery Indians knock off the single hitting Ian Rindler and double up Hayden Peppelman? We'll go to the top of the second. It's Fort Recovery one, Marion Local nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. Back at Veterans Field in Coldwater, we had a strikeout back in the bottom of the first inning when Isaac Moeller stepped to a strikeout by Caden Greasy. Our strikeout sponsor today is Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Wabash Mutual Telephone. Wabash Mutual Telephone is a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And that scoreboard says Fort Recovery 1, Mary Local 2, as we are making Mary Local nothing as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Gavin Fowler, Reese Evers, and Riggs Toby. You know, Mark, at a game like this, it's very important to your team that you try to stress winning each inning. Mm -hmm. um, winning that first inning is a big step for Fort Recovery, especially getting a double play ball in the bottom to come up and hit again. Really momentum type situation sure. when you knock off two. There's Meyer, breaking ball outside. Meyer back to the plate, 1-0. And that pitch is down, it's 2-0. Down into the bottom of this lineup where we've got a bunch of seniors and you said they led the way Wednesday. Gavin Fowler, it's 254 on the season, and that's ball three. Fort Recovery does not run as often as Marion Local does, but he has three stolen bases on the season. And that one's in the dirt, so it's a four-pitch walk. Second inning in a row, getting the leadoff man on, so we'll see what they can do with him. Receivers, the right fielder, it's a 212 average. And Fowler, the first baseman, has three stolen bases, and very local expecting to bunt in the grass right here. You know, it's kind of interesting when you look at the stat sheet, neither team really sacrificed that much either. Only eight times for Fort Recovery through this entire season. It's about one every two games or so. Pitches in the dirt, but Knocked down by Heitkamp, and that is six straight balls to start the inning. Am I correct? Earl Weaver was the king of I'm not going to sacrifice. Yep. I only get 27 yep. outs, and I'm not going to waste one of them. He likes a bloop and a blast, but he had some guys that could yeah. blast. <laughs> yeah, makes a difference, doesn't it? There he got a strike, makes it two and one. And half our listening audience has no Earl. idea who Earl Weaver is. Yeah, Earl? I know. Here's a bunt. There we go. That's a good one. Meyer to has to field it. Throw to second. Oh, my god! And gosh. got him off the bag, and they got him anyway. Not heads up base running there. He rounded the bag like he was expecting to throw, not to even be there. He expected the throw to go to first. Sure. If he would have slid, he was safe. So he gets knocked off 1-4 at second base. You get a fielder's choice. And the fielder's choice for Reese Evers at first base. He's got five stolen bases as Riggs Toby, the catcher, steps in. And he will take a ball. You know, they say when you watch baseball, you see something different every single day, and that's a play you certainly don't anticipate. Swings through that pitch to the level of count at 1-1. One yeah, you have to th wonder what Gavin was looking at on that play. 
especially around the bag. Steal attempt. Here's the got throw him. to second and got him. Heitkamp to second base and they nail the stealing Reese Evers. Reese Evers, excuse me, on a two four. Second baseman grab that or shortstop? Yeah, Evers. shortstop. Shortstop. Thank you very much. And that will be the second out of the inning. This went downhill quick, didn't it? <laughs> Toby's got a 2-1 count and now 3-1. and one. Alex Dews, the final hitter in the order, will be on deck. That ball's fouled back and will go full. Good throw by Heitkamp. That was a great throw, wasn't it? Full count and got him swinging. A home and insurance strikeout ends the inning. So after putting the leadoff hitter on, the recovery will be knocked out of the inning without putting any runs on the board. We'll go to the bottom of the second. It's still 1-0 Indians. You're watching high school tournament baseball on WOS. Back at Coldwater, the premier sponsor today for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. And our presenting sponsor is also Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. So we're here for a doubleheader on Wednesday, right? Yes, sir. 5 o'clock, 7.30. We started 10 minutes to 8. We're reading this Lee's Chicken and Garrett Searag going, oh. you know what? We're hitting Lee's on the way home. It ended at 10.15. They were closed. They were closed. <laughs> <laughs> Spent the whole night thinking we're going to get that on the way home, and it didn't what, happen. Life has some serious disappointments. <laughs> Here comes Ethan Heitkamp, Bryant Meyer, and Parker Hess in the uh, bottom of the second for the Marine Local Flyers. Heitkamp, 328 hitter with 12 RBIs. Hit three home runs this year. you got to hit one to get it out of this park. Yes, you do. It's a legitimate park. I've seen it done, but not very often. Breaking ball outside the height camp. You know, Mark, in a game like this, e either team has a great batting average as a team. So it's interesting if any way you can get a guy on. Foul ball. One and one's the count. Bryant Meyer at 286. Parker Hess at 176 will follow height camp. Ball's fouled back as well, one and two. It's my first chance to see Coldwater's facility since they did a major renovation, and what a what a playing service they have here. It was already nice, but yes. now it's ex exquisite. Fastball inside, two and two. This whole complex here, the softball's mm -hmm. here, the swing pool's here, the park is here. This is a wonderful complex yep. in this community. Heartbeat of the community. And he swings and taps one foul. And anytime you drive through this town, there's always kids using the facilities. Uh, we were driving in. Some, some kids had their own batting cage yes, out in the back, backyard. Yes, I almost want to take around. a video of that. <laughs> two and two. And he got him swinging. Holman Insurance strikeout. That's strikeout number two in the game for Caden Greasy. And that will bring Brant Meyer to the plate. Well, he had struck out 12 batters in seven innings coming into today. It's not something new. why, huh? That Nyers left-handed hitter. Pitches way outside. Ball one. The winner will go to Elida. We'll talk about who they might play and when as this game progresses. That's breaking ball outside. 2-0. and oh. It's kind of a unique matchup taking the bottom of the Northwest District and the top of the Northwest District and putting them together in the regionals. Pitches on the inside corner for a strike. They're going to yes. play somebody from far away. They're going to play either Mount Pelier and Hilltop. They started at 5 o'clock today, so maybe we'll get a report on that one from our good friend Miles Holiday, who is up doing that game today. Once you get Montpelier, you can't stay in Ohio very long. <laughs> That's correct. And it's two and two on Meyer. On 
And he swung through that one and missed again. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Greasy here in the second. His third home and insurance strikeout of the game, and Parker Hess will step in. The winning pitcher here on Wednesday night, he's six and three is his pitching record on the season. Went all seven innings, gave up one run that was not earned. Fastball, threw it right by him. Greasy that, doing a nice job of mixing his pitches up and showing the ability to throw both of them for strikes. Four hits, two walks, a hit batter, and six strikeouts in his effort. That one smoked into the gap. And it looks like a double. And that one's going to go all the way to the wall. Tracked down by Troy Homan, and it is a double for Parker Hess. Second hit of the game for his team, and he's in scoring position for Isaac Mullenkamp, the designated hitter. That's a very well-struck ball. When you and I worked the uh, light of bath game last week, we didn't see any ball that was hit that hard. That, that's an example, though, of big ballpark. He it got is. out to the 348 sign on a line. He got there in a hurry, didn't he? Yep. Up the hill. Exactly. Holman was able to track it down, got it back in to hold him to a double. Let's see what they choose to do with Isaac Mullenkamp, the designated hitter. It's 224 on the season with five RBI. No, we have a ball on the oh, field down in right field. We've got some uh, wiffle ballers over on the basketball oh, court. Oh, that's what it is. I was trying to figure out how a ball got mm -hmm. loose way out there in the middle of an inning. We've yeah, got a lefty right. at the plate, and he's a pole hitter. So <laughs> we're in the process of yeah. moving home plate. Good call, kids. Hey, at least they're playing. They're absolutely. That pitch is outside. And they're not playing something at home with their thumbs. Yes, sir. 1 0. Two outs. Runner on second is Parker Hess for Caden Greasy. Pair of strikeouts and a double this inning. Stayed inside. It's 2 and 0. Kate Neifert's on deck. Two and zero. Oh. Now three and zero. Oh. First base is open. I'm a little bit surprised how shallow Alex Gerke's playing at third base with two outs, especially with the right-handed hitter to plate. Three and zero. Oh. Takes a strike. Three and one. I think a situation like this, you want to cover as much ground as possible. Keep the ball in front of you. We shall see. He got that pitch past him for a full count. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Got right in his kitchen on that one, didn't he? Ball underneath his fist down, with that. Down and in. Three and two with two outs. Be a good spot to go back to, I think, if you can do it. And got him looking. Three strikeouts in the inning. The third one was called third strike. Home and insurance strikeout. And with that, the Marion local Flyers will leave Parker Hess stranded at second base. We'll go to the top of the third. It's one to nothing Fort Recovery. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. It's one to nothing for recovery. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. They are our presenting sponsor today. And Fort Recovery will go 9-1-2 in the third inning. Alex Dews, Troy Holman, Reese Wendell. Alex Dews playing shortstop today after being the winning pitcher on Wednesday. It's 234 on the season. And he's going to get one into the gap. He's going to get and he a gets a peak, gets it past Camden Eifert, and he's going to coast in for a double. 
So Alex Dews will double to open the third inning. He was one for two with an RBI, walked a couple times, scored a run on Wednesday night, and he starts off the inning in a positive way for the yes, Fort sir. Recovery Indians. Here's Troy Holman, who singled and scored Jumping after on a stolen that first base. Pitch again, Mark. That's correct. Sorry to interrupt you no, there. That's fine. <laughs> And he doubled, and this one's going to go foul. Not a bad idea. Left-handed hitter. Of course, Myers, a left-handed pitcher. He's going to mm -hmm. fall off towards the third base side when he makes his delivery. Don't you think in a big game like this with a one-run lead, you're doing anything you can to move that kid to third? Look at the hole on the right side of the infield. They didn't flip their hold. There's Bunt opportunity again, gets it down yeah. in the grass. Nope, it went foul. 0-2 oh, would be the count. They're running that Bunt defense because they've got the wheel play on. They're hoping that the shortstop they, can beat the runner They called him out. Oh, they did? Did the ball hit him coming out of the it box? It might have. That saw must it have been. something. Yep. Okay. So that will be the first out of the inning, and Reese Wendell will step in. Reese had that 10 pitch at bat before he popped up to the third baseman and he rips one foul. The ball acted odd off the bat when I saw it hit the apron, but I, I did not see it hit his foot. I've got a post right in front of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right over the left handed batter's box. 0 1. Good stop nice behind block. the plate by Height Camp. Mm -hmm. Really nice job by Height Camp using his body. Reese Wendell, 339 hitter on the season, eight RBI. And waits on a curveball and got it off the fist foul. One and uh, two. Obviously disappointing for Fort Recovery and Troy Homan trying to move the runner over to end up with no success there. I like the idea though. Caden Homan's on deck and Hit him. that hitting. So that'll put runners on first and second. That's Got Meyer. your RBI guy yep. up again. He did. Holman, the designated hitter, singled and drove in. Troy Holman in the opening inning. That's our only run of the game. You mentioned earlier not the stellar batting average, mm -hmm. but uh, he's knocking people in this year. Pitches outside, ball one. Marion Local choosing not to hold the back runner on base. If you look at the first baseman, he's in a massive shift. Colton Arms is way off the, the back. second base no. hole. And we're going to get a timeout call. That's a situation where if you're the runner at first, you get as much as you can, and any ball to the gap, you're thinking score. Swing through a high pitch that time, one and one. It's a hard pitch to lay off of as a it hitter. Is. It looks good until it gets there. That high fastball. Breaking ball is high. We talked about this, Garrett Seawright and I the other night. Around that twilight time period, mm -hmm. the lights are coming on. It's best to keep the ball down, correct? I think Don't so. get it up in the yeah, eyes where somebody so. can see it. And that ball is going to be flared into right center. They're going to hold the runner. I don't know. They better not. Here's the throw. It's going to be cut off. Caden Holman is two for two and two RBIs on the day. As that scores Alex Dews from second. And in the process, Reese Wendell scampers, scampers all the way to third. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. By not holding that man on at first base, you open yourself up to the trail runner, and he goes all the way to third on a single behind him. Alex Garkey will step in. He flied out to the center fielder in the opening inning, 219 hitter. Caden Homan being clutch here in the first that? part of this game. Two big hits, two RBI, and they call him safe. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure what that challenge play, but right. I think they thought he missed the plate. So Garkey steps back in. 
This team's up 2-0, and they still only have one out in the inning. There's a throw to first, and all Orange had to make a play yeah. to go get it. You know, Meyer still hasn't shown a, any serious pickoff move to the first base bag. It's interesting to see what Fort Recovery does here with runners on first and third. The pitch is high, ball one. Caden Holman has two stolen bases on the season. Not sure whether coach wants to yeah. put a play on here. I think in this situation, you just try to hit through. You've got a two run lead, middle of your lineup up. Two and O's the count. The guy's already at third. There's about 17 ways you can score from third. So don't ask me to list them all right <laughs> in a minute. I knew you were thinking of that. It pitches a strike on the outside corner. The big hole between short and third. It pitches in the dirt, but once again, a good play by High Camp, keep it in front of him. Yeah, High Camp done a really nice job blocking back there. This is a high leverage situation right now, too. Greasy's on deck. Ball's hit That'll up in the air. In. That's hit a long way. The center fielder Griffin Bruns tracks it down. Here's the runner going to score Holman from third. From first. And Holman does scamper down to second base. So an RBI on the sack fly by Garkey. Is the second out of the inning, but Reese Wendell scores with the third run of the inning. You know, really nice base running by Homan there. Base hit now, and you're back at business again. Caden Freezy will step in, 172 hitter on the season. There's Heitkamp making another save be at the plate. Four hits in the game for the Fort Recovery Indians. The pitch is down. It's 2 0. Yeah, Brian Meyer getting a mound visit here from his catcher. Struggling with his location. He'll throw a couple up and then a couple down. Doesn't seem to have a real good feel for the pitch right now. First base is open. That would bring Gavin Fowler, the first baseman, to hit. 254 hitter with nine RBIs on the season. Tight camp back behind the plate. You know, even that ball that just was, resulted in the flyout was well struck. Well We've seen yep. some well hit balls to left and left center. Caden Holman on second base. Long look. That ball smoked past the third baseman. Send him. That ball's in a high grass, and they're going to send him. Here's the throw. And he's going to slide in safely and down to second base. Hustles Caden Greasy with an RBI single. Not to overstate it, Mark, but I still think we're in a situation where that trail runner earlier mm -hmm. was so important. Now he's in the dugout with a run. And now what are we going to get? Looks like we're going to get a runner maybe. Let's take a look at. And what's the discussion? Coach I don't know. Mike's heading to the dugout. And he's talking to some guys in the dugout, including his staff. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Mm -hmm. Coach saw something he didn't like. And Looked like a little sportsmanship yeah, discussion. Yeah, went over to and talked to his guys in the dugout. His team's put three on the board here in this inning, and they lead four to nothing. And that will bring in Gavin Fowler, the first baseman, walked in the opening inning. And with the throw to the plate, Greasy you know, hustled down to second. You saw this the other night where Fort Recovery bunched, a bu bunched many runs yeah. in one inning, and... This inning shaping up that way, too. That is correct. Meyer, long look. 
Pitch dies and falls outside the strike zone. Nobody in the bullpen for the Marion Local Flyers. It's just in the third inning here. Breaking ball for a strike. Got a level to count at one and one. District finals, all hands on deck when yeah. it comes to the mound. High camp knocks that one down as yeah, well. High camp been a busy man this inning, hasn't he? The importance of having that talented catcher. Mm -hmm. Two and one. Laid off a high pitch to make it three and one. Receivers on deck. Fastball outside corner will make it a full count on Fowler. He's getting that outside corner called if he can paint that pitch consistently. That ball's hit up in the air, but plenty of room if he can get there. Long run and nice making play. the play is Camden Eifert to end the inning, but it's a good one for Fort Recovery. They add on three and will take a four to nothing lead to the bottom of the third. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOS. We're back at Veterans Field here at Coldwater. The premier sponsor tonight for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. And our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. To the bottom of the third we go for the Marion Local Flyers. That means eight, nine, and one. Camden Eifert, Griffin Bruns, and Isaac Moeller. This is the left fielder Eifert who made a put out on the last out in the top of the third. He will step in to hit. And takes a breaking ball from a, for a strike from you Kate Greasy. Fort Recovery tonight, and they've got most of their lineups had two at bats, and we're working on some of Marion Local's first at bats. Another breaking ball that he waves at. That's a good pitch. 0 oh, and 2 is the count. That pitch looks good until about the last 15 feet. It just keeps moving. Got, got again. him again. The fourth strikeout of the game. Our strikeout sponsor today is Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. A member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. And Griffin Bruns, number nine hitter in the order, steps in. Five strikeouts. That ball's hit. Fair. Nice arm. Yeah, had to wait. What a good throw. Nice arm. Alex Garkey gunned that one across the field and got him. I was waiting to see if it was a fair foul mm -hmm. call, and he just made a good play on the ball. You know, Alex had one where he's kind of a tweener where you can come in and try to catch it on a short hop or lay back. He knew how strong his arm was, so he laid back. And here's Isaac Moeller. It's a really struck, nice play. Struck out in the first inning. He takes a breaking ball for a strike. You know, you mentioned this earlier about getting ahead or getting behind in the count. I think we're seeing what getting ahead helps. That ball will break outside. Well, and if you've got a four to nothing lead in the yes, third, sir. here it is, hit it. I'm not gonna put you on. Same pitch, breaking ball outside, 2-1. You know, the other day we were talking about the high school pitch count. It's even yep. more important in a game like this to get the ball put in play so you can serve your pitches. Fastball will be high. It's three and one. If you remember, Isaac Muller saw a heck of a lot of pitches his first time up. That one will be grounded up the middle. Shortstop makes a play on it. Here's Dews, and he got him. Two really fine defensive plays on ground balls here in the third. We'll knock off the Flyers and we'll go to the top of the fourth with the Indians on top. Four to nothing. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN.
Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And our premier sponsor today for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. Two really good defensive plays for high school baseball mm -hmm. players in the bottom of the third. Keeps our score at four to nothing. What perfect timing for that. You come off of a great offensive inning and then you get two stellar plays to buffer that and now you're gonna hit again. There's receivers, Briggs Toby and Alex Dews. Receivers. On with the fielder's choice in the second inning. That was that kind of odd play that we mm -hmm. had. A, what could have been a force out at second. Right. First pitch strike from Brant Meyer. That one's going to be grounded. High chopper. And Mick going to have to back up on his Parker Hess. Just a high chopper. It's going to be a base hit. So Evers will. We've got a different pitcher this inning, Mark. The Did we? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Ian yes. Ian Lindler from second base. And it looks like Eifert has moved to, to second. Busy reading commercial break stuff That's and missed okay. that. Thank you. So. I saw it coming from the right side <laughs> instead of the left side. Brings Riggs Toby in. Drops a big breaking ball 12 in. To, 12 to 6 there, huh? First pitch strike. I can get Rindler's numbers for you here if I can dig out my sheet. Here's the high hold, high bunt. And here's the throw him. and got him at second base. Heitkamp throws out a runner, knocks off receivers. we got Ian Rindler with 37 innings this year. This is ninth game pitching. ERA of 3.95. 38 strikeouts, 23 walks. Third most batters faced on the team this year, so obviously the number three guy. And he swings at a breaking ball, does Toby to make the count one and two. He's showing a big 12 to six curveball here, isn't he? He sure is. I thought I'd read those numbers and save you digging in I that, was, I was about that to, archive. <laughs> I got a bunch of them over here. That's two We've and two is the count. Stuff taped to the walls. Yeah. And taped to the desk here. That ball's. Laced foul, keeping track of where everybody's at. Eifert came in to play second base. Bryant Meyer went to left where Eifert had been playing. Ball's hit up in the air. It's going to be hit to Bryant Meyer. He drifts back a long way before he gets that one. That ball was tagged just up in the air a bit. And Alex Dews will step in. He doubled Alex, and scored a run. Alex was the catalyst last inning. He will hit this time with, he led off the third. This time he'll be the third hitter with, up with two outs. Big breaking ball. Got enough to knock it foul. Ian Rindler seems to like that curve ball. That's a fastball that missed outside, one and one. Dews doubled and scored a run. Last inning. And that one will go foul. Now we've got a lot to learn for next week, not knowing too much about the Northwest First yeah. District up there. Montpelier. Montpelier and Hilltop playing today Hilltop. at Bryan. Mm -hmm. Might be able to get a score on that one before long as we approach 7 o'clock here. And he got him swinging. Strikeout to end the inning. That would be a home and insurance strikeout. The first one today for a 
Very local flyer pitcher, and we will go to the bottom of the fourth, but it's 4-0 Indians. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. The Fort Recovery Indians ended their half of the fourth inning with a strikeout. Our strikeout today is brought to you by Home Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Caden Greasy back to the mound. He's got five strikeouts today, and he will be looking at two, three, and four in the flyer order, and that would be Ian Rindler, who is now pitching. And he starts him out with a pitch outside. Two, three, and four. Maybe a pretty important inning, I would think, for the Flyers to get something on the board here. About halfway through this one. Mm -hmm. The way this game's going offensively for the Flyers, there would only be one more at bat for this part of the lineup. Good point. 2-0. They have two hits today compared to six for the Indians. And he spins that one in for a strike. It's two and one. That one's hit to sent to left field. Ball's hit well, Mark. And it is hit very well. It's going to go over the head of Reese Wendell and coasting into second base with a double will be Ian Rindler. Marion Local one of them, trying to make some noise here in inning number four. Give the Flyer fans something to cheer about. Well, we have seen some well-struck balls yeah, that today. Ball was, wow. That ball was well-struck. Right towards the scoreboard. Hayden Peppelman will step in. Rindler's two for two on the day, single and double. Peppelman hit into a double play in the opening inning. Hayden Greasy will take a sign from Riggs Toby. And that hit him. So Peppelman will be on. Hit by pitch. First two flyers are on for Ethan Heitkamp. It's a good move by Coach Hyink to stop the momentum here and break the well, he's facing the tough Ethan, spot. Ethan Heitkamp, a 328 mm -hmm. hitter on the season with 12 RBI. Now we're going to have a. Both groups are doing a little yep. meeting. Yep. Our presenting sponsor today is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, and that is 800-776-3097. Nobody warming up in the Fort Recovery bullpen, so Kate Greasy's the guy right now as Heitkamp steps in. And you know, not to be over dramatic, but Caden's got a little room to work here. Four run lead. That ball's hit. Foul ball. Foul. Got out in front of it a bit. And, you know, baseball being such a funny sport, you could get a well-hit ground ball right here and have two outs. So, hit into a you double. just don't know. Peppelman hit into a double play in the first inning. Heitkamp was the first of three strikeouts in inning number two. And he swings through a curveball and misses it. 0-2 the count. Brant Meyer on deck. Oh, 2 Fastball That's missed, great not pitch. by much. That yes. is a great pitch. Had him locked up and just a bit outside. One and two. And we got a time call. Mm -hmm. Fort Recovery playing their infield pretty far back here. Obviously looking for a double play ball. And he's got him with a breaking ball. Second time that Ethan Heitkamp has been punched out today. Strikeout sponsors, out. Home and Insurance. And they got one other one right there. 
sixth one of the game for Greasy. And just in the fourth inning, here's Bryant Meyer. He struck out in inning number two and takes a pitch that's a bit up in the zone. I'm a little bit surprised where Fort Recovery is playing the first baseman, Gavin Fuller, up on the cut of the grass. That pitch breaks inside. It's 2-0. Oh. You know Parker what I mean? Hesseldeck. Especially with yeah. a left-handed hitter, you, want, you just want to cover ground. Right now, you just want outs. Correct. I don't think we're in a bunt situation Two oh. with one out. This will be a strike, two and one. Now he's moved back behind the runner. Waits on it. There it is. It's there right it is. back to the pitcher. Throw to second. Oh, and nothing. You got nothing out of it. They got nothing. We're going to get a wild throw to second mm -hmm. base. Pulled him way off the bag. It pulled him off the bag is correct. And that will load the bases. You know, you mentioned he had to wait to, for the middle infielder to get there, and that just kind of threw off the momentum of the play. So the fielder's choice will load the bases for Parker Hess, who doubled the last time. Big play, Mark. You know, in hindsight, yeah. you're like, boy, I should have just went to first. But as hard hit as that ball is, yeah. it's perfect for a double play. Yeah, a shot for a double play. That mm -hmm. is correct. So the bases are loaded with one out for Hess. He was two for four on Wednesday night. Scored three runs. Already got a double in this game. Parker would take another one of those right he now, would wouldn't he? would love to have a double right here, wouldn't he? Infield's in at third base. And first. Right, corners in, middle back. And he's going to hit that one up in the air. That should get one in. Reese Wendell makes the catch, and that will score the first run of the game for Marion Local as Ian Rindler trots home on the sack fly. Get it back by Parker Hess. And he will get an RBI for his efforts. The other two runners. Runners, Peppelman and Meyer, stayed at home, and now Isaac Mullenkamp, the designated hitter, steps in. Ray Local's on the board thanks to the RBI sack fly from Parker Hess. Pitches outside. Mullenkamp looked at a called third strike to end inning number two. And the designated hitter takes a pitch on the outside corner. I noticed on the sacrifice flight, Coach Hayes has a system where the runner has his head down and he's going on a verbal cue by the coach. Different philosophies as to how to do that on a tag play. Waits a long time on the curveball and then got underneath it foul. One and two. Personally, I always wanted the kid to go. I wanted the that kid to track the ball and there's that split second of him waiting to hear me. Breaking ball will stay high. Didn't have quite the yeah. drop, did it? Those people wearing purple and white over here to our right. Oh, a strike. They were leaning for that strike <laughs> all weren't they? 2-2, two, two, two outs. Pair of runners on base. And yeah, Mullen Camp oh. took another one. Wow, that one was that outside. Yep. That one surprised me. That's a tough pitch to take, but now we got the bases loaded, two outs, and the wheels will be moving yes, for sir. those base runners. Here's Greasy, and he blew it by him. Greasy gets strikeout number seven, brought to you by Home and Insurance, and ends the inning with a couple runners left on base, but the Flyers get on the board. It'll be four to one as we go to the fifth. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. It's 4-1 Indians as we head to the fifth. 
Our presenting sponsor today is Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable and available at 800 776 3097. Caden Greasy gets a first pitch strike to Troy Holman. Troy, one for two on the day. And that curveball stayed outside. Scored Fort Recovery's first run of the game. And had that kind of strange play where he was called out, leaving mm -hmm. this ball hit him leaving the batter's box. And yeah, it was odd. Foul. You know, a lot of times in high school baseball, obviously the kids have to play the game and perform, but Coach Ayink got a critical spot in the last inning, choosing to go out and settle down his pitcher, and from that point on, basically did his job. The pitch is outside, two and two. Uh, would you call this a big inning for Caden Greasy? Uh, his team just scored, got it to four. Not Caden Greasy, excuse me, Brian, um, the, Ian, Ian, Ian Rinder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His team just got a run on the board. They want to get back, and he hit a batter. Absolutely. Oh, there's no doubt it's a big inning because it's a fifth inning. Yep. And you don't have that many innings to make up ground here, so you certainly have to have a shutdown inning, but not a good start. Ian Rindler, the second uh, batter to be hit today. Yeah, this was the first one. Yep. Reese Wendell. Holman had a stolen base in the opening inning and scored a run because of it. I could see a fake bunt steal here. There's the fake bunt. At least he pulled the bat, <laughs> bat back because the pitch was high. Holman's a double figure base dealer at first base. That is the center fielder. He's got 10 on the season now. Not a very big lead. It bunts, good bunt. Picked up by Rindler, throws it to second. Got him. Wow, they did it again. Wow. Why are you not sliding at second base? So on the fielder's choice, they knock off the lead runner. Unbelievable. You go in standing up, you have to slow Sorry. down. Yeah, you do. And, and the, you know, surprise that they made the play there again. Here's Caden Holman. All he's done is have two singles, have two RBIs, and score a run. Pretty good day when you're the designated yes, hitter. Big slow breaking ball for a strike. If he knocks one in and out, it's going to have to be a double, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Reese Wendell's got 13 stolen bases. He's over at first base with a big lead, and yeah, he's it's a real good lead. Get back on that snap throw. He leads this team in stolen bases with 13, does Reese? Not many kids get out past the cut. And Reese has one foot past. That was much closer that time. Josh McNally calls him safe. Four to one in the top of the fifth. Pitch is high. One and one. Is he looking for one of those breaking balls to steal on? Yeah, I think he's probably guessing. He was leaning that time. Mm -hmm. Rindler realized it and got it over to first base. And he's got to see the move a couple times, so that helps. Two and one's a count. This would not be a bad pitch to run on here. Two one, mm -hmm. single out. He does not. Instead, the ball's hit up in the air to right field. Peppelman came in, but the short the second baseman, Eifert, came over to make the play. Certainly a good thing he didn't run, huh? Yes, sir. That would have been trouble. And Alex Garkey will step in. His sack fly played it a run in inning number three. Really nice job by Rindler to get two quick outs here. Gerke gets two balls into the outfield today. Slow breaking ball stays high. 1 0. Caden Greasy's on deck. Oh, we can tell Coldwater has electricity. Lights <laughs> are coming on. 2 0. Beautiful day, but just a little overcast tonight. Yeah. I wouldn't call it exceptionally cloudy. 
not a dark sky by any means. Temperatures down into the low or upper 70s. That ball is ripped, but foul ripped ball. foul. Had that one timed up right, mm -hmm. two and one. Back to first base. There's Reese Wendell. Two and one. Ian Rindler back to the plate. It's low, makes it three and one. You know, we've seen some games this year where the outfield plays relatively shallow, but I would call these guys playing fairly deep. I mean, we've seen several balls carry out there today. Swings through that pitch, makes it a full count, and with two outs, that will allow Wendell to be on the move. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised he hasn't taken off already? I thought he would, yes. And foul ball. I mean, I've seen uh, Ethan Heitkamp's arm, mm -hmm. and maybe they didn't want to take that chance, but uh, I like aggressive baseball. And that ball's hit up in the air to right center. That's going to score a run. That it is. Reese Wendell's headed home, and that double will plate him. Big hit from Garkey as he doubles in a run. His second RBI of the day after a sack fly earlier. Really nice at bat. And Fort Recovery gets the run back that they gave up in the bottom of the fourth inning and has gone back to a four-run lead with a 5-1 margin. What a knock for the Indians to answer, one, wow. to answer that run yeah. right away. Yeah, he did hit that ball well. Here's Greasy stepping back in. He's got a single today. And he knocked in a run with a single earlier. Boy, the middle part of the order, top of the order's done a, done a job here today. Doing work. For we got four runs scored by the top three hitters. Swings through that pitch, makes it 0-2. I think we can say they're not getting cheated on their cuts. They swing. Mm -hmm. Breaking ball. Now, I know it's been a tough spring. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of rain, some cold, whatever. Teams had trouble getting into a rhythm, but this is a baseball team who the last couple of days has hit the ball a whole yeah. lot better than yeah. their season average. Oh, absolutely. You know, you look at their regular season record and what they're doing here at this time of year. Sure. If you're if you're going to come around, now's the time, and it certainly appears they're doing so. 2-2. Two, two. And that ball's grounded foul. Pass and they're getting right. good swings. Yes, they are. Only struck out once today. Yeah. Greasy back in against Rindler. And that ball's hit. Diving right past the third baseman. They're going to send him. Here's the throw from Meyer. The air high. mails it. So Breezy with a single goes to second on the throw. And Alex Garkey after a double was on, the, on his horse and he scored. Greasy with his second RBI of the day. You know, that's a good example of Coach I not giving a defense too much credit. Mm -hmm. make, make kids throw and catch the ball, and a good throw would have had to play at the plate. 6-1, pitches inside to Gavin Faller. He's walked and flied out today. That breaking ball drops slow. It's 2-0. It just feels like the Indians have taken the Flyers right back out. Any, I, I, I guess Coach momentum. knew what he was doing, not running him, didn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. It all worked out. 3-0. That's why I do my best not to coach when I'm setting up here in the I broadcast know. booth. Yeah, they, they know their players. Yes, they do, and that's the key. Know your players, know your opposition. 3-0. That's a strike. 3-1 to Faller. Receivers is on deck. You always have a lot of coaches in the stands, but most of them only really know one player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. 
Blew that one by him, three and two. Came up and in with a fastball. What is it? You start listening to the people in the stands before long you're setting with them. Absolutely. Yeah. It's what you get paid to do. Know your players and what they can and can't do. That's a pitch ball. Pitch ball stays high. So Fowler will walk. Second walk given up by Rindler today. That'll put runners on first and second for receivers. As efficient as Rindler was that first inning, in the fourth, he's had the opposite experience here. Down ball up the middle. Second baseman couldn't quite get to it. Here's a play at the plate. Here comes the slow, him. and they stopped him. Coach just about yes, had to did. tackle him. <laughs> he threw up that stop sign. That will hold Greasy at third. Fowler goes to second on the hit by Evers, and Riggs Toby will step in. Bases loaded. That was a good throw. Yeah, that would have uh, been interesting. Yep. Griffin Bruns got in, got to the ball in a hurry, and made a good throw. And, and you couldn't tell if that ball was going to get through. And I agree. You've got to give Bruns a lot of credit for charging that ball hard and keeping the runner at third. First pitch strike to Toby. 0 for 2 today. When you look at how deep Griffin Bruns is playing, he came in hard on that ball. Got that breaking ball to hit the outside corner, make it 0-2. Another long inning here for the Indians, isn't it? It is. They have done that this week. Mm -hmm. They're in cold water. Nine hits on the board today. Another nice block. I can't pass to keep that one from going to the screen. One and two, two outs. Got some action in the bullpen, Mark. See if I can get a number for us. That ball's hit to the third baseman. Goes off of him. And that's going to get a run in. Isaac Moeller couldn't make a play on it. And that will be an error on the third baseman. And more importantly, if you're a Fort Recovery Indian, it allows Caden Freeze to score, Breezy to score, and make it now a seven to one game. You got a kid that showed earlier in the second inning, third inning. He's got some power to the alley. Dude, and that's where he hit that one. Up the alley it goes. Right, same spot. Exactly. It's going to go all the way to the wall. One run in. It's going to be a basis clearing triple. Triple. It is for a fact. Alex Dews has doubled and tripled today. And that time he played three runners. So three RBI on that particular swing for Alex Dews. And all of a sudden, we've taken this to a, what is it, nine now? Mm -hmm. nine, two, nine to one game. How about 10? 10. 10 to one. 10, one, two, yep. three, four, five. Yeah, missed a runner. Thank you. Got six in in this inning. It is 10 to one. And here's Troy Holman in. He started this inning by being hit by a pitch. I hardly had time to say that Dews hits him to the gap, and he hits it to the gap. Strike on the inside part of the plate. So. You know, that ball was almost a carbon copy of his double, but it kicked up at the top of the fence towards center field. Bruns had to chase it down. Strike two. What an inning, huh? How about that? Ten hits on the board now. Ten runs. Camp has to go down and get that one. Breaking ball in the dirt. Holman's a 255 hitter on this, the season. This is not a 215 hitting team today. <laughs> He's correct. We've had a good week. That There's pitch was behind him. That going to score a run on the wild pitch. Here's the play. And scored him on a wild pitch. That makes it 11 to 1. As Dews scored from third. Who gets a t-shirt so far, Alex Dews? Oh, man, what a day <laughs> he's had. But so is Caden Holt. Well, I know. Yeah, find a bunch of them. Might have to he's get a couple great games today. 
That ball's hit hard. There's another double. That one's going to the fence. He's Holman thinking three. says, I'm going three. Here's the throw into the cutoff, man. Here's the throw to third, head first slide, another triple. Troy Holman hit one up the right center field gap and pushes it. He turned the wheels on, my man. He did, yeah. He, had, he was thinking three right out of the box. He wasn't was. He? He looked at his coach before he got to second base like you're supposed to, mm -hmm. and coach said go, and he turned it on. But when you're up 10, you can afford to take that chance. Here's Reese Wendell. Very impressive inning by the Indians. And that hit him. Second hit batter. Reese has been plunked twice today. What is that? Three for the yeah, three, three for, for the, the day, day for yep. the team. Here's Caden Holman, single, single. We're gonna get a pitching change here, Mark. They just brought yeah. our bullpen yeah. guy in. While they take a break, well, we're gonna take a break while they change pitchers. You're watching high school tournament baseball on WOSN. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Got a new pitcher in, Luke Everman. His numbers look like this. This is his third appearance of the year. He's pitched 12 innings. He's 2-0, and oh, giving up eight hits, walked three, struck out. His ERA is 2.92. What is it about Fort Recovery that seems to have big innings? Mm -hmm. Because they have put a bunch on the board in this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the board in this one. And they're still hitting as. Yeah, we're looking at a team that failed to score 100 runs during the regular season compositely and just racking up double digits this week. And. Uh, they put 12 on the board Wednesday. Yeah. They've got 11 on the board here yeah. Friday. One-fifth of their season total in two games. Districts are a good place to do it. That pitch is a strike. One and one's the count. And if you survive tonight, you go into next week with a lot of confidence. Our good buddy Ryan Shadowald, who is responsible for the ticker and the scoreboard and all that, says the winner of this game will play Mount Pelier Mount next Pelier. week. They beat Hilltop 12 to 5 tonight. So they put up some runs. That will be on the 30th at Elida. That ball's hit up in the air. That should get us out of the inning. Colton Arns camps underneath it. And Luke Everman comes in and gets an out. But it's a big inning, and that will send us to the bottom of fifth. It's 11 to 1. The Flyers need a run to stay in this when you're watching high school tournament baseball on WOSN. The premier sponsor tonight for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing and assembly needs, you can call OPAC. Our strikeout sponsor has been, been Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. A member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. And we're looking at seven strikeouts today by one Caden Greasy. And he will come back to the mound for his fifth inning of work and face eight, nine, and one. That'd be Camden, Camden Eifert, Grifton Bruns, and Isaac Moeller. Giving up just three hits today and just a single run. I can't see inside the Fort Recovery dugout, but I bet there's nobody on the bench. That ball is smoked. That a pinch hitter step in. That ball was uh, tattooed by mm -hmm. number 27. That's Luke Everman. That's the Everman. The pitcher came who the just game. came mm -hmm. in. So Luke Everman. He was ready. He was ready. He took that first pitch and lined it into the outfield for a hit. Great job by the freshman coming in on defense and offense. And they picked him off at first base. So the freshman got caught leaning. Mm -hmm. Bro, you just can't have that down 10. 
You can't have it at all in the districts, but what a key runner to keep this game alive. Griffin Bruns is at the plate, the number nine hitter. He grounded out to the third baseman on a really good play. Back in inning number three, he takes a first pitch strike. Very sodden, uh, savvy job on defense here. He misses a curveball that was on the outside corner. That was a big oh, corner, my that friend. That was a big corner. Big corner. Was, yeah, kind of like in the left-handed batter's corner box. Corner of the batter's box. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and two. That ball's hit up in the air foul. That's Get your glove you. out. Get your glove out. Oh, and two. That's where the count remains. I'm just impressed. That stat page we got that said Caden Greasy pitched seven innings all year. He has pitched so well yes. today. That ball's hit between third and short, and that will be a single for Griffin Bruns. You know, when you get in a game like this, if you're man local, you just want to string hits together, and sure. you just can't afford to have a your first guy. And back up will be Isaac right Moore. A, a long inning offensively. Mm -hmm. Does that affect Greasy perhaps a little bit? It's been a long yeah. time over there. Yeah. Of course, he ran the bases a little bit. That helps. You always make that trade. Good stop by Riggs Toby. Isaac Moeller is 0 for 2 today. Struck out in the first inning, ground out to short on a play I thought was a hit. And uh, the shortstop. Alex Dews made a really nice play near the bag and threw him out, actually behind the bag and yeah. threw him out. You know, we're talking about Alex being a T-shirt where <laughs> don't forget to play made on defense. Pitch is low. Burt Recovery's had several up. young men have great games today. Good move to first base, makes him dive back. I'd be shocked if he gets two of them. <laughs> I think right now you're just saying, hey, get the hitter. Hey, and he about got the hitter. Went behind him, didn't it? Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that all yeah. day. Wild pitch, his first of the game, will allow a runner to move up to second base in the presence of Griffin Bruns. You know, the last thing I was thinking, we haven't seen any wild pitches, haven't seen any pass balls, and then we had one get by height camp who's done a really nice job behind the plate today. Riggs Toby blocked from that one by the hitter's body. That's a strike. Makes it three and one. We'll conference at the mound here. So it's three and one as Toby gets back into his catcher's position. Greasy on the mound. Fastball got the outside corner. Make it three and two to Isaac Moeller here in the fifth. Ian Rindler's on deck. And every time Moeller's been up today, he runs a count to three balls. And he walked him. So that will bring up, that's just the first walk today, mm -hmm. I think. It is. That will bring up uh, Ian Rindler, who is a cool two for two today and has scored the only run, singled and doubled today. Kate Greasy looks in and spins one. It's going to go up the gap. And it's going to get down. That'll bring in... Griffin Bruns. It's also going to bring in Isaac Moeller. And the Flyers stay alive and make it an 11-3 game on the second double by Ian Rindler the game today. Is that about the sixth ball we've seen right in that yeah. spot, right up the terrace in did, left center? Did the uh, Cincinnati Reds still have that mascot called Gapper? Unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I thought. He should be here today because we've had a lot of balls in the gap today. I think the Reds have as many mascots as they do pitchers. <laughs> well, we better leave it at that. Peppelman well, steps in. Yeah. All you have to do is look at the standings. 
I could have said pitchers. I could have said hitters, throwers. <laughs> what a shot by yeah. Ian right Rindler. One and nice oh. stay at the plate. Doubleman. And that one catches the inside corner to make it one and one. You know, we're still in a situation where the only out this inning was a pick. That's right. Yeah. Time called. One and one. What a job, though, by the top of the flyer lineup and then started with Griffin Bruns to keep this game going. Fooled by the breaking ball, makes it one and two. That was a good pitch. It was. Snapped that off, got it inside. One and two. Got a single out. Rindler's on second base. That one's hit over the, well, I guess it's State in the Park, didn't it? Caught the mm -hmm. top of the right field sideline fence, first base fence. Makes it one and two still. Pepple moves a 333 hitter on the season. Hit into a double play, but hit by a pitch today. That one will go foul as well. First team all conference player. Is it junior? Marion Local boasting three first yeah, they do. teamers. Peppelman hits that into right field. Nope. That center right field is going to get, get back. And he does so. Are you surprised we're trying to steal third? Uh, I was wondering. So Peppelman flies out to the left for the second out of the inning, and Ethan Heitkamp will struck, uh, step in. I just don't know how much that gains you down these many runs this late. Taking a chance there. Heitkamp's had a tough day at the plate. He's 0 for 2 and has struck out twice. Pitch is high. Six hits now for the Marion Local Flyers. Go with their three runs they put on the board. Ethan Heitkamp hits 328 on the season. Swang through that one. Kind of unusual for a hitter with that kind of a high score average to have had such a tough time today making contact. That ball smoked right at him. Right, right to the center fielder. And Troy Holman makes the play. Back to back putouts for Troy Holman. But the Marion Local Flyers stay in the baseball game by scoring a couple. It's 11 to 3 now as we go to the sixth. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Elfus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. It's 11 to 3 with Luke Eberman on the mound. Karki is at the plate. He now has a 1-1 one and one count. So he faced one batter and got him out in the fifth. Then we go to the sixth. It's 2-1. and one. Well, the last time Marion Local scored, Fort Recovery came right back and answered. Maybe not so important right now, but I'm sure they'd take it. Pitches outside, makes it three and one. Ken Greasy's on deck. Garkey today, sacrifice fly, double for a pair of RBIs. He scored a run, it's also flied out to center field. And that one was hit to center field. And it's going to be tracked down out there by Griffin Bruns for the first out. I tell you, Mark, a lot of action in the grass today, isn't there? There is. Not many ground ball outs, no. are there? A lot, of, a lot of balls to the outfield. <laughs> Here's Greasy. Singled, scored a run. Actually singled twice. Singled had, twice. Yeah, couple RBIs. Singled twice, got a couple of RBIs. First you know, we were strike. talking earlier, the difference we saw early is one team able to get ahead of the hitters early and the other team not, and I, th I think we're seeing the results of that. 
That pitch is a bit wide. It's one and one's the count. Definitely makes a difference, doesn't it, in high it school does. baseball? Yep. Any baseball. Up in the air. That is might that fall. fall. And it does. Look at this. We got nobody covering second, second base. base. And he hustles, and nobody's covering third either. Unbelievable. And he gets all the way in third. There's now nobody at the plate. And he will. They get him. Got him. I have never seen that never. in high school, but never. Unbelievable. Have you ever seen that? I've never seen that before. In fact, single, double, triple, what do we call that? He just well, kept, it's a just triple. triple. He just got yeah. right on running. And then finally he gets caught out to play, and I don't know who handled the ball how many the center times. Center fielder. Center fielder made the play. He ran all the way in. Because the ball fell drop, right in front of him, and shortstop and sure. second baseman were there. Yeah. He chases him he chases all the all way, the way to around, third, all the way to home plate, and caught him. Wow, what a play. So we have a triple and eight unassisted at the plate. Never seen that. That's got the crowd buzzing. <laughs> on both sides. That is Cr crazy. First of all, the, the wheels turned on by... Greasy, and he's going to go set in the dugout and rest because oh, yeah. he's got to come back out and pitch. Well, just the recognition that there's nobody exactly. covering bases in front of him, and then the center fielder recognizing, you you got to catch him. I got to make a play, and Griffin Bruns did. Griffin showed some wheels. He finally got a better angle. Once he's chased him to third, he cut it off at about shortstop and ran towards home, but Greasy made him earn it. Somehow we got two outs. We'll be talking about that one for yes, a while. Yes, we will. And Gavin Faller takes the ball. So will the kids. Well, you know what? That was one where both sides were pleased with the hustle yeah. of their team. We almost had an inside park, park home run, run on a ball that drops behind second base. In, in a ball that you and I would have called a Texas leaguer, but yeah. nobody knows what that means yeah. anymore. That ball's fouled back to the screen. Just the odd one and two. position that it found all the defenders in. Yes. And the heads up play by Greasy just to keep running. You know, we used to in WOSN have the top five plays of the week. That's that, number that one. That was easy. Yeah. yeah, that's number one. That would have easily have been one. Two and two's the count on Fowler. We could just run that, just yeah, top just, play of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and got him swinging. We get a what an inning. open insurance strikeout to end the inning. And we will go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 11 to three Indians. You're watching high school tournament baseball on WOSN. The top of the sixth inning ended with a strikeout and our strikeouts today are brought to you by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, a member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Crowd still buzzing over that play, Mr. Spencer. I'm still buzzing over that play. <laughs> Bryant Meyer will step in to hit here in the sixth for the Flyers who trail by eight. Meyer today has struck out and been on with an air. A little conference at the mound right now. Yeah, it was everything good about high school baseball, watching those two boys hustle. Just hustle. Mano yep. y mano. <laughs> you get a triple and a put out with no throws. All right, Meyer, the left-hander, steps in as Caden Greasy goes back to the mound for the sixth inning. Ground ball. That will head to the Should second baseman, Sage Wendell, and that's an out. You know, after Caden Greasy's last inning, one pitch, one out's a great start. Parker Hess will step in. He's got an RBI today. Parker's had a good day. Had a yep. double his first time up and a very productive at bat. Like you said, a sacrifice the second time up. It's been the shortstop today. That one will be lined foul. That's one that deserves a reaction down the right side. You know, you're always afraid of a ball like that coming in your dugout. Yes. I've uh, like two. unfortunately witnessed some bad endings to that. That ball's roped. 
What's the call? Fair. I was waiting for yeah. that part to make a call. I thought it was. And there's going to be a double. And there's Hess on the board again. You know, that's another unique situation defensively where Gerke's clear up on the grass. And, and yeah. you'd think deep in a game you want to guard the lines and play deep. I don't know if he'd have had to play either way, but. Here's Isaac Mullenkamp. He has struck out twice. You know what? This is a my pitcher's tired. It is, yeah. Physically tired. Yeah. He's been running well, the bases just, yeah. and the sprint he just made to dive in the home plate. And this is Riggs Toby going out and saying, I'm going to give my guy a chance to catch his breath a little bit. You know, it's one thing if you do that in the first inning, but he's already thrown five innings. It appears, though, that this is his day. <laughs> There's nobody in the bullpen. The ball in the first pitch. Single out now with Hess at second base. Ball two. You know, when I was a kid pitching, you never even thought about that. You just, no. you, you just go out and play. But there's a lot of evidence that fatigue makes a difference. 2-0. and 3-0. Oh. You know, customarily when a young man's legs get tired, they start pitching up in the zone. He's taking more time between pitches. All these are signs that might be a good time to settle him down and get another arm going. That pitch is in the dirt, and that will be a four-pitch walk. And, you know, Mark, it comes yeah. basically at no expense if you have another guy. Here, here comes Coach Ink now. You got plenty of time and to get your staff reset before your next games. He is going to make a change. Leverett's coming off the bench. While they change pitchers, we're going to take a break. You're watching high school tournament baseball on WOSN. Ken Greasy's day on the mound is done. He's replaced by Rex Leverett. Rex pitched a little bit on Wednesday night in the win that they put together over the Parkway Panthers on the season. 21 and a third innings. He's given up uh, his records one and two. The ERA is 2.297. He's given up 13 hits, walked 13, struck out 10 in those 21 innings. And how about the effort today by Caden Greasy? Yeah, exceptional. Greasy so far, let me see, looking through my roster here, walked two, hit one. Struck out seven. Of course, he's responsible for the runners on base right now in the presence of Parker Hess and Isaac Mullenkamp. Ty Greasy moves over to third. And let's see. He moved to third. Hughes is still at short. So there's, there's uh, one out here in the sixth. And Leverett will throw a first pitch that's a ball to Caden Eifert, not to Caden Eifert, it's excuse me, Luke Everman. Yep, who replaced him. second pitch yep. that Everman's seen today. First time he saw one, he hit it in the outfield for a single. That ball is hit to the third baseman. Step on it. Here's the throw across. Got him. How about that? And who made that play, Mr. We know it. Yes, we sir. It. The pitcher, Caden, uh, Camden uh, Greasy, had been moved to third. He just made a double play to get out of the inning. What a play by him. And we'll go to the top of the seventh. It's 11-3, Fort Recovery. You're watching high school tournament baseball on WOSN. Your sponsor today for Mary Local Flyers is OPAC in Osgood. For all your paint, industrial painting, standing assembly needs, call OPAC. And that ball is hit up in the air and will be tracked down by Sage Wendell. No, it's not Sage Wendell, excuse me. We've got Reese. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? Yeah. yeah. I think that was Eifert made that. The play. Eifert? Yep. Yeah. So the first out by Evers. Camden Eifert. Here's Riggs Toby. Takes a strike. 
you know, uh, Everman's come in and pitched pretty well. He has. He really yeah. has done a nice job. And he put the bat on the ball really well, his two at-bats. He did. Bought him called a ball. So tell he's going to be a really nice player, only a freshman. Foul back, one and two. I'd take him. Uh, yeah. You look at a long, lean kid like that, mm -hmm. and he's a freshman. How mm -hmm. tall do you think he'll be next year? Exactly. Yep. With. And how strong will he be as he gets in the mm -hmm. weight room? And what happens between now and his junior and senior year? That ball is hit up in the air. It's going to hang up, though. Hang up long enough for Bryant Meyer to run it down. So, a pair of quick outs here in the seventh inning. And I know the game's not going the way the Flyers want, but what great experience for a uh, freshman at the district, pitching at districts. Here's Dews. Comes Alex a t-shirt guy. Tripled, no, excuse me, doubled, scored. Struck out, tripled, three and drove triple. in three, scored. That ball's hit to the third baseman. Nice play. High hop, and throw across the diamond. Really and nice And they get him. So it's a 5-3 out. It's a 1-2-3 inning. And we will go to the bottom of the seventh. It's the Fort Recovery Indians 3, the American Local 11, the American Local Flyers 3, watching high school tournament baseball on WOS. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And that scoreboard shows Fort Recovery Indians with 11 runs, the Marine Local Flyers with three as we go to the bottom of the seventh. And Rex Leverett back on the mound, and he will face Griffin Bruns and Isaac Moeller and Ian Rindler. Came in and got a ground ball double play to end the sixth inning. Second double play they turned today. Had one in the first inning. Tap foul. Leverett with a really long delivery. Ball's hit foul. 0 and 2. Quickly gets in front. Game is right at the two hour mark. And got him with a swinging strike three. So Leverett gets a strikeout, a home and insurance strikeout. That would be the eighth of the game that the Fort Recovery pitchers have thrown today. Here's Isaac Moeller to hit. Struck out, grounded out, and walked today. Scored a run after he walked. And he's going to get a hit. base hit. And oh, ball's going to get by. Yeah, took a bad hop and got by the left fielder, Wendell. And he's going to coast into second with a double and go to breaks on right there. Nice break for the Flyers there. You could just see that ball hit and take about a two to three foot hop to the left. Okay, so the official score scored it single and error. I disagree. Well, he, he had no chance of catching that ball. On such a well manicured field, it doesn't expect a hop like that. Yeah, must have hit a molehill. <laughs> would you give him an error on that? No, I would not have. Absolutely not. No. Rindler steps in. He's had a really fine day at the plate. And got it. Double play. It's going to be a double play, the third of the game. Sage Wendell climbs the ladder, yanks that one down, steps on second base, gets a force out. And that will bring this game to an end. And you can watch the Fort Recovery Indians, who now go to 13 and 12 on the season, and watch them celebrate a district championship. Quite a ball game for them. Mm -hmm. so we'll do some quick number tallying here while we have a moment. The Marion local Flyers today. And they will finish their season at 18 and 12. They had three runs. They did so on eight hits. They had a single air today. They left seven runners on base. The Fort Recovery Indians, 11 runs, 12 hits, one air. And they left just four runners on base today. 
Pratt Meyer will be the losing pitcher today, and Caden Greasy will be the winning pitcher. And he had a really nice day today. He sure did. He sure did. I want to thank our sponsors today. Our scoreboard sponsor has been Wabash Mutual Telephone. Our strikeout sponsor has been Holman Insurance. The premier sponsor for the Marion Local Flyers is OPAC. Presenting sponsor, Brook Petroleum. And another presenting sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Thank the athletic director here and tournament manager, Mr. Eric Goodwin, as he helped put all this together for us. We thank Abby Beck and Jacob O'Neill. They did our camera and technical work today. And Jacob will take this back to the station and edit it all together. And what it will show you is a district championship for the Fort Recovery Indians who will move on to play at Elida on the 30th of this month in the regional tournament. And they will do so with an 11-3 win. It's been a great baseball game. Well, sure. Thank you for watching. You've been watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN.